If you've ever been curious about how can I collaborate with my partners, my customers, well in this video we're going to look at how with Azure AD B2B. Hey everyone, nearly every organization has some requirement to collaborate with people outside of their org. These could be partners, they could be consultants. Now if I think back to my early days, and I'd like to say when I still had hair, but actually I don't think I did. If I had an identity on premises, let's say Active Directory, and there was some entity that lived outside of my organization, and I had some resource, something that I wanted to give them access to, what I tended to have to do was I would create them an identity in my identity provider, like an AD account, and then I could act all that resource to give them access. And that's a horrible solution for everyone. It's a horrible solution for that user because they have to remember another credential. It's a horrible solution for me as the owner of the resource that I now have to have capabilities to manage those accounts, to let them reset their passwords. And it's horrible for that user's organization to revoke their access if they leave the company, for example. So it's bad for everyone. And it's for those same reasons we like Azure Active Directory. If I think of Azure Active Directory, what we kind of do is we take our security principles, our users, and we replicate them up to the cloud using Azure AD Connect. And then from Azure Active Directory, we can connect to a whole suite of types of resource. Now, this could be things like Azure. This could be Office. This could be SaaS apps either part of the kind of federation catalog within Azure AD, and it's like 3,000 of these, or I can add my own, SAML, WSFED, whatever. They may even be applications that actually kind of sit on premises. And what I can do with things like Azure AD App Proxy is make them available through my Azure AD identity. I can pre-authenticate, for example. And so I have all of these things can tie into Azure AD and we like that because now I don't have separate identities for users in my organization. I'm extending my corporate identity to the cloud and then all of these hook into the cloud. And through all of those, I have things like conditional access, CA, where I have a set of conditions and then I can have controls. And it's very common to have things like, well, I'm gonna have MFA. I'm gonna have a terms of use. So that's phenomenal for everyone in my organization. But I still have this person. What can I do for that? So there's actually a number of options. This is where B2B comes into play. And what B2B is gonna let me do is that entity, that person, that partner, that consultant, whatever, they already have some kind of identity. And I'm gonna let that identity be known to my Azure AD where I have all my resources tied into. And they're gonna get kind of that single identity experience. They don't have to have another identity that I have to manage, that they have to worry about, that their company has to think, how do I deprovision that thing if they leave? And there are a number of different types that are supported. So I can think about, if it's like a, an organization, well, they have their own Azure AD. That's a supported scenario. I can bring those users in. Maybe they don't have an Azure AD. Maybe they have a Microsoft account. Well, I can bring those in. Maybe it's a Google. And by Google, we're really talking about Gmail. We're not talking about Google at work at this point. And I can bring those in. Also, 
well, maybe this other company, maybe they actually have their own identity provider. They have an IDP and they have some kind of federation capability, could be ADFS, something else. Or maybe they're an identity provider out here as some kind of cloud service. Well, I can bring those in as well. We can talk SAML, we can talk WS Fed. So whether it's a cloud-based identity provider, whether it's on-premises and I have a SAML WS Fed solution, could be ADFS as an example, I can bring those in. What if it's none of those? I'm a user and none of those things match me. Maybe my company has Azure AD, but I'm not in it yet. So what used to happen was that account would be added to something called a just-in-time, a viral tenant that was unmanaged. But what now happens is what we're really concerned about is does that user still have that identity? They've not left that company. And generally, email is a great way to do that. If they left the company, they'd lose access to their email mailbox. And so what we can actually do, and we pick another color, so many colors today, is have something called one-time passcode, OTP. And I can bring that in as well. And what one-time passcode basically does is when they want to authenticate, then they get emailed a code every time they authenticate. Well, to read that code, they have to still have access to their mailbox. So the fact that they can get the code and type it in as the challenge means they still have access to the mailbox, i.e. they're still part of that organization. So now I have all these different ways, but the sum of this essentially creates like a little stub object in my Azure AD. It's not a separate identity. It's a security principle. It's a user type, typically guest. Now, normally these are all going to be guests. And there's certain things I can do in conditional access, certain queries I might do, but it doesn't have to be. I can make these members. If this maybe was an acquisition and they're now really part of my organization, it really doesn't make sense to treat them as a guest, I can change the user type to member. Uh, that, that's something I can do. But for all of these, the authentication stays over there. So they authenticate here. There's not a separate password over here. They authenticate. And then once they've authenticated, then I can authorize them to access different types of resources. All of these resources could be a SharePoint site, could be added to a group to get access to an app, even published using app proxy from on-premises. They're still going through conditional access. I could still require things like MFA. If I do MFA, it's MFA on my side. If they've done MFA over here, I don't care about that. They're MFAing on my side. I can have terms of use as part of conditional access. Hey, you have to agree to this before I'm gonna let you proceed. Make sure you understand what you're supposed to be doing with this type of resource. So I have all of these capabilities. As an organization, me, I can control who can be invited. I can create an allow list. So these are the DNS suffixes that I'm going to allow to be to be, everyone else will be denied. Or I can create a deny list. Don't let these people belonging to these orgs connect. Everyone else would be allowed. And I do want to be super clear. Just because, for example, let's say I light up Google as allowed to be added as an identity provider, doesn't mean everyone with a Gmail account now has access. It's just giving them the ability that they can be invited. That, that's all that step is actually going to do. And I have all these different methods. And you might say, well, Azure AD, that, that's probably going to be the best one. No, Azure AD, Microsoft account, Gmail, Direct Federation, one-time passcode, they're all equal. Once they've done that authentication stage, they're still going through all the same conditional access. I can still do MFA, terms of use, everything else. Now you may wonder, okay, you're talking about MFA and terms of use. How does licensing work? So essentially there's different SKUs of Azure Active Directory. There's Azure AD Premium P1, P2, and there's the three, three SKUs. If I wanna access things like MFA um, or maybe more advanced features, that requires a premium license. 
And by default, the way this works is, for every licensed user in your Azure AD, enables me to use those capabilities by five B2B users. So on my side, if I had 100 people licensed for Azure AD Premium P1, 500 B2B users could use those same capabilities. So does that kind of make sense? There's often a question, hey, yeah, look, I did do an acquisition. Um, I have these other Azure ADs. I want everyone in that org to automatically be B2B'd into this org. And there's not really a capability directly to do that today. Now, I can easily write scripts that can perform that logic, that can handle joiner, mover, lever type scenarios as well. There are third parties that have solutions out there. There are ways, like when I invite someone, there's normally a redemption flow. For example, typically they'll get an email sent to them, they'll click the link, uh, they'll redeem that invite, and they'll do a consent and say, yes, um, this tenant is allowed to use these attributes of my account. But I don't have to do an email, I can customize that flow. I can bulk add people, which is what I would do in kind of the scripting scenario. Also, we have entitlement management. So entitlement management is a nice governance feature that in my tenant, I can create a package of stuff. Uh, stuff could be group memberships, stuff could be access to SharePoint sites, stuff could be access to certain apps. And then as part of that entitlement package, I can say, well, who is allowed to request access to that entitlement? And then what's the flow? Does someone have to approve it? Um, so I have that capability and then people could just go and sign up if they're within those approved lists of orgs, they say, hey, yeah, I want that access package. It will be to be them if they're not already. Once it's approved, go through and give them those rights. Once I have guests, well, there's special conditional access things to detect guests. Uh, I can do access reviews. Access reviews can go and check, well, these guests, should they still be guests? Should I revoke it? Should I disable them? So there's a whole set of great functionality around this. But the net end result of all of these things is I have these resources, like a business apps, be it on-premises published via App Proxy, stuff in Azure, stuff in Office 365, uh, other Microsoft clouds. They could be SaaS apps, line of business apps, all hooked into my Azure AD, all going through my conditional access, or maybe MFA, requiring terms of use, whatever controls I might have. Now I'm extending it to all these other identities. So these people, no matter where they're coming from, their identity can now have this moniker, this avatar in my Azure AD that represents them, that can now be given access to things either directly by group memberships. They're still authenticating over here. It's just authorization to things goes through my conditional access. And again, with those entitlement packages, access packages, they can even go and kind of self sign up as long as they're one of those approved people. So B2B is phenomenally powerful. Um, every company I talk to today is looking at using B2B in some way. Uh, I hope this is useful. Uh, please give this video a like. If it's useful, subscribe. And quick shout out, my new book is out. And I actually talk about B2B a lot in it. Um, but thank you for watching and uh, have a great day.